What's going on, everybody? Dan here with another Moonshine Talking, and I am going to do an album review today of Vincent Crowley's latest anthology of horror. Uh, this was a pretty cool album. Uh, full disclosure, I've chatted back and forth online with Vincent a few times, uh, but I'll be very honest, that, that doesn't change my opinion one way or the other of the songs, the music, or the album as a whole. Uh, I, I kind of laugh. I, I think like uh, Doug Stanhope once said it about some politician, I think, where he was saying, yeah, I'm biased toward, towards him. He, he follows me on Twitter. But while well, that's very funny, that's not really, uh, that really doesn't factor into my decision making. Uh, if anything, if, if I thought the album wasn't any good, I'd probably use very generic, bland descriptions of as far as oh yeah it's it's all right it's it's a it's good it's it's doing good but no uh anyhow um before i get started with my actual review i do want to say that if you want a really in-depth very thorough well well thought out very well researched not that my stuff isn't but it's it's not as in-depth as as his will be Check out Eddie from Realms of Metal. He does a great, phenomenal, fantastic review of this album. And he's, he's great. All his stuff is great. I love Eddie's work. He, he does a fantastic job. He, he takes everything from a fan perspective. He's very passionate. He does his research. And it, he's just, he's a cool dude. So I, I know most everyone who's watching my stuff watches his. So it's not like I'm telling you anything you don't already know. But anyhow, go check out his review of Vincent's album. And yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, overall, I, I really like the album. It was it was good in the sense that every every song was a story. All the stories were based on folklore, horror movies, things of that nature. Uh, you had you had Jekyll and Hyde one. You had a, a, a Lovecraftian story. You had one based on Amityville Horror, the horror movie, and the uh, I'll just call it a folk tale. Uh, what else? You had one based on Serpent and the Rainbow, the Wes Craven movie. Uh, what else we got? Uh, the really interesting one that I'll get into a little bit, uh, Gods of Crimson Calling. That that was a fantastic song. And then uh, one about werewolves. So anyhow, so it, it was it was good because the way that the the music is structured around the songs is very well crafted. It they they took a lot of time. And I'm going to cheat here a little bit and get out the liner notes. And I'm because I want to give props to the band because they did a phenomenal job. But R. Taylor, Eric Stewart, Ryan Arger on drums, Tim Wilson on bass, they all did a phenomenal job crafting the music that accompanies these stories that are the songs because everything creates. Uh, creates a tone, it creates a feel, a vibe to the songs that really give it depth and, and give it a give it life, for lack of a better way, not to sound too artsy fartsy about it. But that's that's basically that's what I what I thought of it. Vincent's vocals are really good. They're harsh, but they're decipherable, which is helpful when you're you're crafting stories, you're crafting songs based on stories that that people are interested in. Uh, as far as the packaging, the packaging is really good with the album. Getting more into the specs kind of deal, but you can see it again. What's the inside? It's the back. It's one of the few. I'll just go through the first through the front page where you can actually sit down and read the lyrics, as opposed to some of the liner notes on CDs where you can't see crap. But yeah, there's the band Vince in the middle. The rest of the band. Uh, but it was really, overall, it was it was very 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 well done. I, I really enjoyed a lot of the a lot of the songs, a lot of the structures of the songs, the leads, the rhythms, all that sort of stuff. Um, as far as the songs individually, uh, coup de padre or de padre, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Madame Laveau, Laveau uh, da 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 da, the. Nowhere to Hide. Those are all really good songs, but they're really not my favorite ones on the album. They were good. Uh, Nowhere to Hide kind of captures, again, with the way the music is structured around the, around the songs, the, story, the stories of the songs. It, it captures a lot of that frenetic energy that you would find in, in the 
Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde story. So it was really well done, but it just, it wasn't my fit. It didn't really like grab my attention like a lot of the other songs did. Like for example, um, that which lurks below the sea, that one is is really good. Like I say, a lot of stuff that I wrote about it was that the the musical accompaniment to the stories is, is top notch. Uh, there's a, it has a very uh, sea shanty feel to it. And there's even, there's even bells chiming in the background at, at points, which is a nice touch, a nice little accent to the idea of going out to sea to, to find this monster and then this monster ends up killing everybody and, and they all succumb to madness. Uh, but that was really good. And then there's even parts of it where you hear these little haunting echoes in the background where you can't really make out what they're saying, but it's it's like, you know, if you're out there on the sea and you're trying to discover all, all of what just happened to this to this craft, or this vessel, and maybe in the background you just hear these these moans of agony and you don't really know where they're coming from it, it was really really well done uh amityville horror that was that was the opener it starts off with this really beefy riff and you're like yeah fuck yeah, and really getting into it and then uh the the chorus is a really hypnotic and creepy uh it and then when the song itself it, it starts to really get cooking it's like it, it really, you know, for lack of a better, the cooking analogy, it starts boiling and it's, it's, it's really, it's raw, it's aggressive, it's what you'd expect. And then it goes into a lead and, uh, and, and the, some of the beats in it, it just creates this kind of, towards the end of the song, creates a surreal vibe where you could almost expect it. Like if you were somebody who had just been in a haunted house and experienced all these, this, weird phenomena and whatnot and then you left the house you just left your hat ass and wallet and just got the hell out of dodge to get away from this damn thing and it, it just it, like i say overall the music really creates creates a vibe to the stories and to the songs that really really bring life to it and, and i really it's it was really well done uh, my favorite song was probably under the hanging tree that one i've probably listened to like i've listened to that quite a few times and it's just it's it starts off with uh, this very, very melodic, and I know it's the the scene is set in a swamp, so it starts off where you can hear that you, there's they do sound effects where there's in sound bites where it's in a swamp, so you get the get the idea. But it does just create this this image in your head when you're listening to the music of this like fog drenched swampland and something bad's about to happen and and the way the the melody is really it's it's kind of mellow but again very 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 off off putting a little bit and as the story as Vincent's singing the lyrics and you, you start to the story starts to unravel and you get the idea of what's going on and then it it starts to at the point where it's the revenge piece of of the song it just kicks in overdrive and you're like oh, yeah just stuck in the stanky bass but then the lead on it it has uh to me in my ears it has some very unsettling tones which again s sits well with the with the song structure and the music and everything every the the placement of everything in the song is again really well done uh blood moon lycanthropy about werewolves uh and it has that's the one where i know uh a lot of the, a lot of the album is, is compared to Merciful Fate, a little bit of Candle Mass, stuff like that. This one with the twin leads in it, that one probably had the most fate-like feel in my opinion. And it has this, uh, there's times where the, the music is very calm, which would, would be kind of something where you would, you would expect from where somebody is cursed by a werewolf and they haven't, what, they haven't quite changed just yet and then when there's the parts of the song where they start changing then it gets really heavy and aggressive and and you can really you, you start to you start to get the the pictures in your head if you just sit there listen to it with headphones and your eye closed like i did and that was kind of that was my what i thought of that one again very very killer very uh stellar work then God's a Crimson Calling. That that one was a that was a cool one because the concept behind it was uh, vampires coming down for they were an alien species coming down to Earth, enslaving mankind, but at the same time helping civilization grow. But the Faustian pact that they drew with mankind was that 
you're going to have to feed them. You're going to have to provide them a source of food. As long as we're giving you this, you're going to have to deal with this. And some of you who we deem worthy might might get to become immortals and and be one of us. And it was a very it was a, a very uh, interesting interesting concept. You know, it's you know, people dabble in conspiracy theories and all that. They probably think like, oh, yeah, that's definitely something legitimate that would have happened. But it's got a very cool at the beginning of it. It's got a little space rocky kind of riff, which makes sense. It's uh, to use a term that the kids use nowadays on brand for the song and what the portrayal of what the song is supposed to have. That's uh, it's just it was it was really well done. Uh, it ends with a cover of Killer by Merciful Fate. And that's really well done. It's a. Uh, being as they're a death metal band, almost death doomy band, it's a little bit more unique for them to take on a Merciful Fate song because obviously the the vocal styles are going to contrast dramatically from Vincent's vocal style compared to King Diamond's. There's not going to be a bunch of falsettos and and high pitched wails and screams and stuff like that. But it was really good. It was a good way to to close out the album. So overall, I would say that this is probably a four out of five for me. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I've listened to it multiple times. I wanted to wait to do a review on this. And actually, I'll tell you a funny story about this. I hate Amazon. I hate everything about Amazon. I don't want anything to do with Amazon. But it was either get it off of Amazon or get it from Hammerheart Records and take a bath on the shipping. So I said, fuck it. I'll just get it i'll just set up an amazon account i'll go get a i'll go get a freaking gift card or something and i'll put it on there because it's just, it's just something i i don't i don't like amazon i don't i don't want to give my money to freaking dr evil there so he can send off his penis shaped rockets into space and leave us all here to fend for ourselves while all him and his fat cat buddies take off to the moon or mars or whatever after they've pretty much they, they've been the gods of the crimson culling, as it were. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I really, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't happy about doing anything on Amazon, but that would give you an idea of, of how serious and how, how much I wanted to get this album. So I went ahead, I bit the bullet, set up the Amazon account, got it, got a couple days later. And listen to the thing a bunch of times. I wanted to listen to it a few times so I could actually take notes and sound halfway prepared for leaving a review or posting a video reviewing the album. I want to do it some kind of justice. Again, I'm not going to do it as much justice as Eddie from Realms of Metal did. So again, please go check out his channel and his review of it. It's a lot more in depth than this one will be. I know uh, Revic from Morton Red, he's going to do one himself and I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job on that. And yeah, so that's my review. Uh, four out of five, I definitely recommend it. It's definitely, thus far, it's it's one of my more favorite albums that's been released this year. It's up there with The Obsessed. Uh, I'm going to do uh, a review pretty soon. I just want to do a couple more, another listen, one or two more listens of an album. Uh, but I will give you spoilers. It's going to hopefully be a double feature, as it were, because I don't want to go like 20, 25 minutes battling about bands and music because I, I i know people have a lot of you know people's time and and patience for stuff is limited you get a lot of options so anybody i appreciate you coming on the channel and checking my stuff out i always do you know it's really cool that anyone watches this dumb shit but i do appreciate it but again spoiler what i'm gonna do is hopefully a double double feature album review it's gonna be saxon and the new judas priest and that's the idea. Hopefully I don't take forever, but I do want to give the Saxon one more listen to take some more uh, more notes and be a little bit more informed on it. And then hopefully not take forever. But yeah, so that's that was it. That's my review. Go check out Vincent Crowley. He's also got an awesome YouTube channel. Uh, answer does a lot of Q and A's. He's he's very very personable, very approachable. Like I said, I've I've chatted back and forth with him online a couple of times and he's a very cool dude very interesting dude and yeah go go check out his channel subscribe to it go check out his q a's if you have questions about metal or, or anything that you might think he 
he might have an interesting take on. He, he's he's very personable and he he'll answer them. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's that's all for now. And as always, stay sick, stay heavy, stay brutal upon impact. Always tuck your chin and don't forget to breathe. I will catch you on the next one. I got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm going to try to pound out a few videos that will hopefully be interesting to people. But for now, I will catch you later.